Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Marlene Warren and Sheila Keen Warren? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Marlene Warren was raised in the state of Michigan. She became involved in a romantic relationship starting when she was very young. She had her first son, John, when she was 15 years old. Not long after this, she had another son named Joe. At some point, Marlene married the father of her children, but he was killed sometime later in a motor vehicle collision. Marlene met a man named Michael Warren when she was about 22 years old. The couple married, and Michael raised Marlene's children as his own. The family moved to West Palm Beach, Florida, because Michael had family in that area. Michael found work as a meat inspector, and he and his wife started to buy rental properties. Eventually, they accumulated over 20 properties. Marlene managed the business. Michael eventually left his job and started a car dealership called Bargain Motors. It was an extremely shady business, Motoring right by this company was the only way to get a bargain. In 1983, Michael was arrested for tampering with odometers. He had been helping the vehicles discover the fountain of youth. His sentence was 18 months of probation. Despite his criminal behavior, Michael did well financially. He and his wife bought a house in an upscale neighborhood called the Wellington Aereo Club. Every house in the neighborhood backed up to a runway. Michael had an airplane and earned his pilot's license. Marlene fit in well with the people in the area, but Michael did not. People viewed him as bizarre. Strange things kept happening to him, like he owned a racehorse that was kidnapped and later found dead, and his airplane was also stolen and recovered sometime later. To some extent, Marlene and Michael were living separate lives. On September 23, 1988, Marlene's son John was killed in a motor vehicle collision. He failed to stop at an intersection and slammed into another vehicle. The relationship between Marlene and Michael was already distant. It only became more troubled after John's death. Marlene started to become fearful of Michael. She thought maybe he was going to murder her. She told her mother, if anything happens to me, Michael did it. Around this same time, Michael started having an affair with a woman named Sheila Keen, who repossessed vehicles for Bargain Motors. She lived in an apartment in West Palm Beach. Sheila had a criminal history. She had been charged with shoplifting and theft when she was younger. Before moving to the timeline of the crime, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, Factor. This May, get Factor and enjoy clean eating without the hassle. Skip the trip to the grocery store and skip preparation and cleaning up as well. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Then get back outside and soak up the warmer weather. Factor helps you to avoid takeout and ordering in with delicious and nutritious no-nonsense food. Factor's chef-prepared meals make it easy to eat well, so you never have to opt for something that isn't good for you. Their registered dietitians work hand-in-hand -hand with their kitchen to ensure every meal is made from scratch with nutritious ingredients. Factor is my go-to solution for dinner after a long day of working on videos. Factor helps me to stay efficient and not waste any time on cooking or going to the grocery store. Head to factor75.com or click on the link below and use code DRGRANDE40 to get 40% off your first Factor box. That's 40% off your first Factor box at factor75.com, DRGRANDE40. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On May 26, 1990, Marlene Warren was in her house along with her son Joe and some of Joe's friends. At about 10.51 a.m., a white Chrysler LeBaron pulled up in Marlene's driveway. An individual dressed as a clown exited the vehicle carrying flowers and balloons and knocked on the front door of the house. Marlene answered the door and said something like, Oh, how nice. While handing Marlene the flowers and balloons, and without saying a word, the clown produced a revolver and shot Marlene one time in the face. Marlene was struck just above her upper lip. The clown calmly walked back toward the Chrysler LeBaron. 
Marlene's son Joe, who had a cast on one of his legs, came out of the house and yelled at the clown so the person would look at him. Initially, the clown was not down with the idea of turning around, not even to give a frown. However, before leaving, the clown did look at Joe. He would later say that the clown had dark brown eyes and was wearing red and white face paint as well as a fuzzy orange wig. Initially, Joe believed that the clown was a man. The clown drove away in the Chrysler LeBaron. Joe and his friend climbed into a vehicle and attempted to pursue, but the clown was nowhere to be found. The police were called. Marlene was transported to the hospital. She died two days later, on May 28. Here's what the police found during their investigation of Marlene's murder. The bullet removed from her body was either a 38 Special or a 357 Magnum. Both bullets have the same diameter. At 1.33 p.m. on the day of the shooting, the police received an anonymous call from a woman. She stated that they should take a closer look at Michael Warren and his affair partner, Sheila Keene. Marlene's husband, Michael, had an alibi. He was with several people in a motor vehicle heading toward a racetrack. Sheila, however, did not have an alibi. She claimed that she was driving around looking for vehicles to repossess, but she could not remember which vehicles. Michael and Sheila both denied that they were clowning around, even though it was clear to everyone around them that they were having an affair. Sheila had told people that she carried a 38 caliber revolver when working, her estranged husband told the police that Sheila had a 38 caliber revolver. Sheila told him that she lost it about a month before the murder. The police were able to connect the balloons and the flowers that the clown left at the crime scene to a Publix supermarket in West Palm Beach. The store was a half mile from Marlene's house. The items had been purchased at 9.22 a.m. on the day of the shooting. Store employees told the police that a woman with dark brown hair made the purchase. She was wearing gloves. The police spoke to workers at a local costume store who remembered an unusual encounter. Two nights before the murder, a woman had entered the store and seemed to be in a hurry. She was looking for a clown costume. The employees told her to come back tomorrow, but the woman refused and said that she needed a clown costume now. The employees not only sold her a clown costume, but also an orange wig, a red clown nose, and makeup. After being shown a photo lineup by the police, the employees identified Sheila Keene as this customer. On May 30, 1990, four days after the murder, the police found an abandoned white Chrysler LeBaron in a Winn-Dixie parking lot. It was about eight miles from the crime scene and about nine miles from Sheila's apartment. It was roughly halfway in between. It appeared to be a convenient spot to leave the car if Sheila was in fact the killer. This clown car had an interesting history that connected it to the crime. Michael's dealership, Bargain Motors, used the word payless in advertisements, which caused customers to confuse it with another local company called Payless Car Rental. It appears as though Michael did this on purpose. Payless owned the Chrysler LeBaron. A couple had rented it from them. But when it was time to return the vehicle, the couple called Bargain Motors by mistake. Someone at Bargain Motors told them to leave the car on the street outside the gate and leave the keys. The vehicle was stolen. In the LeBaron, the police found strands of brown hair and synthetic hair, which was orange in color. Sheila's apartment was searched on the same day the car was found. In her apartment, the police discovered fake orange hair and fibers on her shoes which matched the carpet in the Chrysler LeBaron. The police decided to search Bargain Motors. They didn't find any evidence connecting Michael to the murder, but they did find evidence of other crimes. Michael was charged with a number of offenses, including odometer tampering, grand theft, and racketeering. Ultimately, he would spend almost four years in prison. Michael was never charged in connection with the death of his wife. The police thought that Sheila was the killer and that perhaps Michael was involved, but they couldn't prove anything against either one of them. The case went cold. In 2002, 12 years after the murder, Sheila and Michael went to Las Vegas and married. Investigators found this to be curious considering they both denied that they were having an affair. Sheila and Michael moved to Abington, Virginia. Sheila was using a different name by this point. She called herself Debbie. She told people it was a nickname from when she was younger 
but no one had ever heard her mention the name Debbie before. Sheila and Michael owned a hamburger restaurant called The Purple Cow, located in Kingsport, Tennessee. This is not far from Abington, Virginia. The restaurant appeared to be quite successful. Michael had a special hamburger that he sold there called Mike's Intimidator. It was a one-pound hamburger on a nine-and-a-half-inch bun. He charged $5.99 for it, but this, of course, doesn't include the cost of visiting a cardiologist. In 2013, the police reopened the investigation into Marlene's murder. They found a six to eight inch fiber among the balloon ribbons left of the crime scene. This fiber had been overlooked by several other investigators. The fiber was consistent with the orange fiber found in the Chrysler LeBaron. In 2017, more advanced DNA tests were conducted using the strands of brown hair found in the LeBaron. The results pointed to Sheila, although it was not a great match. Sheila Keen Warren was arrested and charged with first-degree murder with a firearm. By this point, she and her husband had sold the Purple Cow restaurant and retired. Instead of enjoying retirement in Virginia, Sheila was given a free vacation in Florida to await trial. On April 25, 2023, 59-year-old Sheila Keen Warren pleaded guilty to second-degree murder. The terms of the plea deal called for a 12-year sentence, but when considering time served and the good behavior time-off laws that were in effect in 1990, it is likely that she will be released from prison in less than one year. The state was in a tough position because a number of key witnesses had died. Their case against Sheila was not terrific at this point. The Palm Beach County State Attorney said that the deal obtained a measure of justice for Marlene Warren. He went on to say, quote, Sheila Keen Warren has finally been forced to admit that she was the one who dressed as a clown and took the life of an innocent victim. She will be a convicted murderer for the rest of her days, unquote. Sheila's attorney had a different point of view. He said, quote, this is an incredible win for Ms. Keen Warren, unquote. He also claimed that Sheila was innocent, saying, quote, while it was difficult to plead guilty to a crime she did not commit, it was kind of a no-brainer when there is a guarantee that you will be home with your family, unquote. Now moving to my analysis. Despite pleading guilty, Sheila somehow maintains her innocence. Many innocent people have pleaded guilty simply because of the math of the criminal justice system. So pleading guilty in and of itself doesn't mean that Sheila was responsible for the crime. This brings me to the question, was Sheila Keen Warren actually guilty? Let's take a look at the factors both for and against the idea that Sheila was guilty starting with the inculpatory evidence. Sheila was having an affair with Michael, and both of them had a criminal history. Michael had allegedly asked people about killing Marlene. He once had a discussion with an attorney about a hypothetical situation of a man killing his wife to get her money. The attorney mentioned something about dressing up as a clown, suggesting that not being identified as the killer would be critical to getting the inheritance. Sheila had once dressed up as a clown when she worked in an auto parts store. Marlene told her mother that if she was murdered, Michael was the killer. Sheila had a 38 caliber revolver that mysteriously went missing. Her alibi could not be confirmed. The Chrysler LeBaron that was used in the murder had been stolen right outside Bargain Motors. Hair found in this vehicle was determined to be similar to Sheila's hair. The DNA matched 5% of the female population Sheila was in that 5%. A fiber from the balloon ribbons was matched to a fiber in the LeBaron. Fiber on a shoe owned by Sheila was similar to the carpet in the LeBaron. Employees at a costume store identified Sheila as the person who made a hurried clown costume purchase two days before the murder. Employees at a Publix supermarket described someone who looked like Sheila as the person who bought the flowers and the balloons. After the murder, Sheila married the victim's husband and changed her name to one that she had never used before. When Sheila lived in Virginia and worked in Tennessee, she allegedly confessed to the murder at a party while intoxicated. Moving to the exculpatory evidence, Joe initially thought that the clown was a man because of the size of the hands and the physical size overall. Many law enforcement personnel missed the 6-8 to eight inch fiber that was found with the balloon ribbons. The DNA test results from the brown hair found in the LeBaron 
indicated the hair could have belonged to many different people other than Sheila, including Marlene. Furthermore, just because Sheila's hair was in that vehicle doesn't mean that she was the killer. The police did a terrible job during the investigation. They made a number of mistakes handling the evidence, including breaking the chain of custody. Their investigation was a three-ring circus. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Sheila Keen Warren was guilty of murder? Yes, I believe that she was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Despite this, the state of Florida made a good decision with the plea bargain. Their case in 2023 wasn't as strong as it should have been. I think that Sheila wanted to murder Marlene to be with Michael and to gain money. When the Chrysler LeBaron fell into her lap, this gave her an opportunity to commit the murder using a vehicle that she thought would be difficult to trace. This is why she was in a hurry to get the clown costume. She needed to commit the murder before the police started looking for the LeBaron. As far as Michael's potential involvement, there's no way to know if he had a hand in the crime. In my opinion, if he was not involved, he must have known after the fact that Sheila was the killer. No one could be that obtuse. This is one of those cases that should have been solved early on. It was painfully obvious from the beginning who was guilty. But somehow, Sheila managed to avoid leaving a great deal of evidence behind. Now moving to my final thoughts. This case can be summarized in this way. In an effort to move uptown and get a wedding gown, Sheila was willing to dress as a clown and throw down. She avoided a meltdown, but facing a profound lockdown, she pleaded guilty to avoid a legal showdown. Those are my thoughts on the case of Marlene Warren and Sheila Keen Warren. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.